Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a tutorial on how to build my many to one auto trader. And if you look closely, you'll notice I've made a few changes since the showcase video. I swapped out the item filter for a less finicky version and I fixed a minor tile ability issue with the orange line. So before we begin, let's quickly go over the materials. So we have 12 blocks for the exterior here. These can be whatever you want. Then we have 13 solid blocks of any kind and one transparent block. Usually this is gonna be half slabs or glass, whichever you prefer. Then we have each of these redstone components in these values. You can uh, go pick those up. And then we have four barrels, three of which have to be barrels. The fourth one can be a normal chest if you want. Then we have one of any type of logs, six of any type of leaves, four named items for your item filter, and 41 of whatever you're going to be using as your payment. Then we need three of a random item. This is going to be used for monostables and the item filter. And then we need an X amount of however much you want the person to pay to get the item out of this. So I'm doing eight diamonds is my price so i'm just going to pick eight sticks and this is going to go in the item counter here all right next you need to figure out where you want to put the input barrel and clear out an area that's going to be eight blocks back including the barrel so one two three all the way up to eight and then it needs to be 10 blocks deep from below the barrel all the way down and then three blocks above the barrel like so once you figured that out, then we can begin building the circuit. All right, so we're just going to start with the user interface here. So we put in the barrel that the user is going to use, and let's put in the light that's going to be the in stock indicator. And then we got to do this green bit here, which is going to be the payout circuit. So let's grab a hopper, paste it into that barrel there. And put another barrel on top. This one can actually be a normal chest, um, but we're just using a barrel for this instance. And then we're going to put two hoppers feeding into that. And then we're going to need another barrel up here. This one has to be a barrel because it, we have to transfer signal through it. And you can't do that with a normal chest. So then we'll take a solid block, put that here. Then we'll grab comparators and we'll put a comparator feeding into that. That's going to pass our signal from our stock here into the lamp and then we're going to have to have a couple more solid blocks down here we'll have a, another comparator feeding into that and then we'll get a hopper face it this way with a or a dropper with a hopper facing back into it all right and then we're going to put one of these random items in here and that's it for that circuit so eventually when we get the signal from the orange line it'll kick that item over temporarily unpowering this barrel which will unpower the hopper which will then suck one item out and transfer it down and out to our user all right so moving on to the item filter we're going to need to put a couple hoppers like so this one facing that way this one facing down and then we're going to take a comparator out of this top one and feed that into here then you take your transparent block put it like that and then we're going to take a dropper facing upwards and a hopper facing into it and then we're going to run a redstone line across the top like so. All right. Then we're going to take another solid block there and a block below it. And we're going to take a comparator and face it back this way. And then come in here, take another one of these random items, put it in there. And that is our item filter. So basically, well, I guess we got to put these guys in here too. So let's drop four like that and 41. Now our filter is completely set up. So if you're only doing one of these, you're going to have to redirect this redstone dust because you see it's pointing into this output hopper right here. 
and that will actually prevent it from outputting to the player. So if you just build one of these, you have to turn it like that so it's not pointing in. Um, but eventually, if you stack a bunch of these next to each other, you'll have a bunch of redstone like this, and it'll redirect itself, so you don't have to worry about that. So yeah, the signal, when you get an extra item in here, uh, this will change from signal strength of 2 to 3, and this redstone dust will power this dropper which will output to the hopper which will then be locked because it has redstone on top of it and since there's nothing in here this will depower allowing this hopper to suck that item out and then it'll go back down to signal strength of two so this will unpower let the item go back down to the dropper which will repower this which will lock this hopper and bring it back to the original state so that's basically how that part works and yeah on to the next one all right next we have to do the item speed limiter so we're just going to grab a barrel put that down for our output there and grab a dropper face it into the barrel downwards like that and a hopper facing it into the dropper and we're going to grab a couple solid blocks like that and another dropper facing upwards like so and a hopper facing into that. Now let's take some comparators and we're going to come out of the um, bottom one here, so out of this dropper and back into the hopper like so. And then we're going to take our last item and put it in there. Alright, so now when an item is pushed into this part, It'll power this comparator, which will kick the item up into the hopper, which will then power this comparator, which will stop it from putting things down. And it will also activate the dropper, which will output to our uh, payment storage here. And that way we only get one item at a time. And then we'll take output from this comparator here into our item counter, which is the next section. All right, now we have to do the item counter bit. So we're gonna start by putting a note block under here and a solid block on the other side with a piece of redstone dust on top of that. And we're gonna take hoppers or droppers and face them into each other like so. And these are going to have our eight items in there for our price. If you have a different price, then you're going to put a different number of items in there. Then below that, we're going to have a couple of sticky pistons like so, and like so, Oop, not there. And then take an observer, place it facing up like that. And we're going to take some blocks, place one there, one there, one there, and one there. Then take a comparator, paste it into that. We're going to need another note block here. And then we're going to need another comparator on top of that observer. And then we're going to place in some redstone blocks. So there, there, and there. All right. And then we need an observer facing upwards like so. So how this works is we get the pulse coming in uh, from this gray circuit here, and it will power this upwards facing dropper, but it will also then power the block below it, which is this note block, and the dropper below that because droppers are affected by quasi-connectivity. So the note block then updates the dropper to inform it that oh hey you're powered right and then it all this pulse also powers this redstone dust with only one power so it doesn't spread to adjacent ones and this redstone dust powers the block below that which powers this dropper here so every time there's a pulse we're actually activating both droppers but because below that, we have a redstone block under one of them. It's always going to be under one or the other. Only one of them will actually fire. So the one firing will be the one with the items in it. And it will keep firing this one over and over and over and over again until there's zero items left. 
and then this comparator will turn off it'll fire this observer which will fire the piston which will move this redstone block out of the way right which will then depower this piston which will then allow the redstone block to move back over to the other side like so and then all of our items will be over here and then every time it pulses it'll only be powering this one and pretty much the same thing happens so basically the items just get fully transferred from one to the other and then we're basically using this observer down at the bottom to detect every time it switches from activating one dropper to activating the other dropper and whenever it does that it's completed the count and it has to send a signal back up to the top so that's basically how that works that's called the pulse divider or pulse counter and yeah so on to the next one all right so now that we're done with that we have to run the signal back up to the top so we're going to take a sticky piston here and then we're going to grab a log it doesn't matter what kind of log i'm just going to use oak and we'll put that on the end and then we also need leaves so let's grab the leaves and one two three four five six that's going to go up and so now every time uh, this piston gets powered it will move the log adjacent to the leaves and if we hit f3 here you can see on the right side over here there's targeted block minecraft oak leaves right and right under that there's a distance with a value of one that's how far it is away from the nearest log so this one's one away two away three four five six and if we have another one up here it says seven um but if we then move the log away we'll notice they all say seven so if they have a distance of seven they will decay unless they're placed by a player and so basically up at this top we're going to have an observer facing in and it's going to detect that number right so when the piston gets powered the number again will change right go to seven and the observer can see that so that's how we're transferring the signal up here and then we're going to need note blocks like so another observer a couple more note blocks and a couple more observers and that will take the power all the way up all right so now that we're done building we want to test this out so we come back up here we're going to stock this we're going to do elytras and then we want to come over here and we said eight so let's just grab eight and sometimes you have to uh initialize the system all right so you see it didn't work there so what we got to do is make sure that these redstone blocks are in the correct position so both of them should probably be retracted and yeah and we should be good we have eight items in here all right so now next time we do this it should work oh we can see it pulsing there and we got one output Oh, I forgot to turn this. So we're just going to get rid of those. And one more time. You can see it counting. And that should be the output right there. There we go. Got the elytra. All right, everything looks good. So one thing, if you want to have a centralized pickup for all your payments, sometimes it's nice to see like which slice is getting used so you can see where your payments are coming from. Uh, but if you wanna kind of have a centralized point for 
picking all of them up you can take this dropper here face it out like that you can get rid of that barrel and then you can just run a line of hoppers like so all the way along and then it'll just spit them out into the hoppers and these can go deliver it to some central storage area all right i think that's it for now so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye